Welcome, Illumineers and fans of the happiest card game on earth. My name is John C. You've just been putting the inkwell alongside today's 20 something reveals. Let's get started. First up, a two costed inkable 3 1 for one lore. Trigger, imprecise shooter with the ability Me Old Bestie. Your characters named Nutsy gain one lore. This was a uncommon card revealed by Lorcana France TCG. We are translating it, so it may not be 100% correct. Uh, for those of you who need a reminder, Nutsy, because I sure did, Nutsy is a two costed inkable 2 3 for one lore um, uh, storyborn ally in the same color. So, uh, so yeah, not, not, not sure either of these is particularly impressive, to be honest, if you manage to draft both of them, perhaps. Uh, if not, nothing to really write home about. Next up, a two-costed Inkable 1-3 for two lore in Amber, Wendy Darling, talented sailor, dreamborn hero at Uncommon Rarity. The Uncommon Wendy Darling is more exciting to me than her super rare Sapphire version. This is just a really good statted um, aggro quester. Floodborne Wendy incoming, perhaps, but if not, I actually think this goes in quite a, a few uh, sort of low to the ground decks. Next up from the TCG cast team, a three costed inkable 2 2 for two lore in Amethyst, Jafar Lamfeath, a storyborn villain sorcerer with I am your master now. When you play this character, look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them on the top of your deck and the other on the bottom. Uncommon card with a fair bit going for it, honestly. It's a sorcerer in Amethyst, it's relatively well statted and it has an on play ability i still think you probably pay maleficent that's letting you draw a card on three instead of this one though next up from the laughing place a two costed inkable two two for two law pua pot-bellied buddy storyborn ally in amethyst with always there when this character is banished you may shuffle this card into your deck a common card and the king of the draft my goodness this i, I <laughs> This is such a good limiting card. In a 40 card deck where you're seeing a lot of the deck through the game, Pua coming down and just constantly questing, it's not even challenged uh, to be banished, it's just straight up banished, goes back into the deck, you're gonna draw it again. Oh, I love it, this is, <laughs> this is a great common. Don't know if you'll see constructed play, but absolutely fantastic for Draft Unlimited. Couple of cards here from Podkana, a three costed inkable, a three costed uninkable action in Amethyst, last ditch effort. You can exert chosen opposing character, then a chosen character of yours gains challenger to this turn, uh, uncommon card, doing its best effort to fix the problem with the ruby and steel stuff that wants to challenge. Here you're making yourself have a target and then making that challenge even a little bit more one-sided. Fortunately it's in Amethyst and I don't know whether Amethyst is the colour for this card. Also two costed inkable item in Amber, Wildcat's Wrench. You can uh, rebuild to exert this, remove up to two damage from chosen location. Not sure this one sees play, really, an uncommon card. And if locations are dying, it's because they're being banished. I don't think anyone's chipping away at them. And therefore, I don't think you're going to see the value out of this in your decks. And last up, a pile of Disney Afternoon Showcase from comicbook.com. First of all, a four-costed inkable 3-4 four for two lore. Flint Hart Glomgold, Lone Cheater, a storyborn villain with They'll Never See It Coming during your turn. This character gains evasive. Deals nicely with a lot of the evasive threats that are seeing play currently. And for that reason alone may well see it find a slot in some decks but otherwise nothing really to write home about a seven costed inkable seven seven for three law at common rarity king louis band leader storyborn ally king a massively statted sapphire vanilla and a two costed inkable one three for one law lena Saberwing. rebellious teenager storyborn hero sorcerer with rush another common card here Rush with this stat line confuses me quite a bit. I guess it does take out Lilo's if you're on the play, but otherwise isn't really doing much. Still awesome art for an awesome character. And then we move into a pile of reveals that were shared uh, during a um, stage on Discord. This is a relatively new thing, I think. It's a basically a big chat room that everyone can get into, and then Team Lorcana can head up to the front and show off some cards. I was uh, very privileged and lucky enough to be invited on to, uh, to show off these cards and to talk uh, with people 
uh, about them. I was joined by uh, Rebecca from Locana Illuminary, a fantastic content creator over on Instagram mostly. I'll put a link to her in the description. And also Rochelle, the uh, the, the global uh, community manager for the game. And Shane, who I don't know his official title, but works on a lot of the um, sort of layout and, and, and graphic design of the game. So he's the he's the one who takes the art and puts it on these cards. <laughs> anyway, we got to show off a, uh, a whole range of stuff, like 13 cards, I think. So we'll move on with this two-costed Inkable 1-3 one, for one law. Scrooge McDuck, Uncle Moneybags, Dreamborn Hero, with the ability Treasure Finder. Whenever this character quests, you can pay one less for the next item you play this turn. You'll see this one here has a promo rarity. This is going to be the event promo for set three. So any events that uh, Ravensburger find themselves at throughout the, uh, the, uh, the entirety of set three, and no matter where you are in the world, no matter which event you're at, this is the promo you're going to get. It's just the one promo this time. There were three last time, Rapunzel, Four Dozen Eggs, and Pinocchio, I think they were. Uh, they found that that was a bit of a logistical issue, so this time it's just Scrooge McDuck. So he's the one you're going to be wanting to find if you see Ravensburger at an event. Uh, as far as the card itself goes, the art is incredible, but it's uh, you know it's another thing that items and items, and I, it's not my thing. I'm sorry. I, this, this could be very good. My problem is, is because I'm not very interested in the item decks, I feel find that the item cards all kind of blend into one and I don't know which is the ones that you play. There's so much different stuff now that seems to make items cheaper. I just don't know which one the best is. As soon as the set's out and people are playing with all of these, somebody less smooth brain than me will tell you. <laughs> the next promo cards are all the ones that are part of the OP kit. So these are the ones you're going to be able to pick up at your local league play. So your local game store play. Uh, we don't know the actual rarities for these yet. They only showed off the promo versions. I did ask for the actual rarities and I was given a very straight no. <laughs> so we'll have to wait to find that out. First of all, a forecasted uninkable action song in Sapphire. How far I'll go. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one into your hand and the other into your inkwell, face down and exerted. Beautiful art here, also featuring on one of the two play mats for the set. And actually, this is a pretty good card. It's maybe a little overcosted at four, and it's been an inkable can be an issue, but it is singable. Lots of things that are going to be able to sing this on curve, and you're just getting a lot of value out of it. It's basically card draw and ramp in a card. It's pretty good. If this was maybe one less, I would say it's a staple. At four on Inkable, it, that's the only thing that's really holding this back. But otherwise, it's really good. Next up, a three-costed Inkable 3-3 three, three for one lore. John Silver, greedy treasure seeker, dreamborn villain, alien pirate captain with chart your own course for each location you have in play. This character gains resist one and gets plus one lore. Woo wee, this is the location payoff we've been waiting for, and it's actually pretty good. Doesn't even need to be at a location, just needs to see them. This, coupled with a location that cares about pirates that we'll take a look at in a moment, actually makes a very uh, promising Ruby Steel location slash pirate deck. I think this is a really great card. Um, we've never seen a promo card yet be a higher rarity than rare, so I'd be very surprised if this wasn't a rare card. But this is very playable, I think. Next up, a three-casted inkable 2-2 for one lore. Kick Cloud Kicker, tough guy, storyboard ally with sky surfing. When you play this character, you may return chosen opposing character with two power or less to their player's hand. Again, very playable card in Emerald. A lot of early Emerald plays more about sort of questing and letting your opponent and deal with it, which can very often be very strong, but if uh, they're playing something that's kind of doing the same thing and maybe gets the uh, the better start out the gate than you, it's very difficult to catch up on tempo. Kit here makes a great option for bouncing back something that is either outpacing you or they're just going to get value out of something like Cinderella uh, Ballroom Sensation. Very playable card in Emerald. Emerald just keeps getting good, uh, solid, playable stuff. There's another one coming up that's kind of insane. Next up, a one-costed, uninkable location in Ruby with a move cost of two and a willpower of five. Jolly Roger hooks ship. Look alive, you swabs. Characters gain rush whilst here and all hands on deck. Your pirate characters may move here for free. Exciting location, this one. Nice and cheap. Get it down early. Really strong ability, giving everything rush. And whilst two is a little expensive to move to, pirates coming here is pretty good. At the moment, we don't have the most incredible selection of pirates, 
but I feel like Forceful Duelist is going to love coming here for free and uh, and being able to rush as a 3-3. And also the uh, the John Silver we just saw is going to be a big fan of this card as well. Yep, yeah, whilst Pirates isn't quite there yet, this one really does start to put them on the map. Keen eyes of you will have noticed in the background of that art there was the beginnings of Ursula's cave forming. And here she is in all of her glory. A three-costed, uninkable 3-3 three, three for one law, Ursula Sea Witch. Dreamborn villain sorcerer in Amethyst, you're too late. Whenever this character quests, chose an opposing character to can't ready at the start of their next turn. Rare card with quite a lot going for it to be honest. It is uninkable but otherwise actually this is quite playable. This thing questing away and just shutting down the opponent's board is going to be a great tempo shift. Still think the real value out of this is going to be a Floodborne Ursula that we are yet to see but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Next up a one costed inkable action in Amber. Quick patch remove up to three damage from chosen location. A common card that I would be surprised that uh, if it sees any play. Uh, alongside that, a two-costed inkable action in Sapphire Repair, removal to three damage from one of your locations or characters. Now, this one is a little bit more interesting just because of the versatility, and it's in a color uh, that cares about this sort of stuff as well. Grand Pabby quite likes this one, uh, but again, not too sure whether these sort of uh, little damage heal things are really going to uh, be enough for what you need them to do. This one, on the other hand, is very spicy. A two-costed inkable action song in Emerald. Strike a good match. Draw two cards, then choose and discard a card. This is a common card and is, I think, possibly the best card draw we've got in Emerald. It's inkable. It's singable. It's draw two and discard one, so there's some filtering in there as well. And there may be even a deck that cares about discarding yourself with the uh, Sheriff of Nottingham we saw the other day. This is great. This is an absolutely fantastic common card. Uh, I'd be surprised if a if not a good chunk of emerald cards, uh, emerald decks didn't start running this. A three costed inkable item in steel, gizmo suit, cybernetic armor, banish this item, chosen character gains resist two until the start of your next turn. A common card here that tells us gizmo duck is on the way, although Rochelle, as this one was revealed, told us it isn't in this set. Gizmo duck is joining us at some point. And in a sapphire steel deck that cares about items and recurring them, this one could see a little bit of pay purely because it's an item that banishes itself for a relatively decent ability only time will tell and lastly we got a trio of magic dispels a lot of people who uh, sort of you know really follow the lore of this game and really follow the sort of spaces in between where cards have yet and been revealed kind of new magic dispel was on the way but i was i'm absolutely honored to be part of the uh, the reveal for these because they're actually all pretty good. First of all, we have a two-costed inkable 2-3 two, for one law, Magicka Dispel, Ambitious Witch, Storyborn Villain the Sorcerer at common rarity. Yes, it is a, uh, a, a Storyborn Vanilla uh, common, but if that tells you one thing, it tells you that there's a Floodborn on the way, which we'll take a look at in a moment. First, we have a four-costed inkable 3-4 three, for two law, Magicka Dispel, Thieving Sorcerer, Storyborn Villain Sorcerer with Telekinesis. You can exert this to return chosen item with cost equal to or less than this character's power to its player's hand. This is an uncommon card. Uh, with a lot of versatility, you can use this for item destruction against your opponent, or you can use it to return a pull score back to your hand and start the card draw process all over again. I don't think I would ever have called Amethyst Sapphire being an items deck, but these cards on their own starts to make it viable. Especially this last one, an absolute build around seven costed uninkable four six with no law, Magicka Dispel, the Midas Touch, Floodborne of Villain Sorcerer, Shift Five, and All Mine. Whenever this character quests, gain law equal to the cost of one of your items in play. A super rare. Uh, a really good fun card this one. Narratively, Magicka Dispel is always after Scrooge's number one dime. And my word, these two cards go nicely together. If, uh, if Magicka Dispel quests whilst you have a lucky dime out, she quests for seven. It's literally that good. Now, the dime doesn't see that seven and therefore you can't uh, exert it to gain the seven again. This isn't a gain 14 two card combo, thank God, <laughs> uh, because it's specifically looking for uh, law totals that the card has generated, whereas here, you as the player gain law 
when she quests for zero, basically. That's obviously a conscious decision on their part to, to not make those two cards too insane. But even stepping out of Magical Christmas Land for a moment, you can have a Magicka Dispel on turn uh, two. Turn three, you can play an item. Turn four, you can play something like Eye of the Fates. Turn five, you can shift this, exert Eye of the Fates, and then Magicka Dispel quests for five. It's pretty good, five on five with a decent body to hopefully stick around for another go. Items that grant ward, items that grant resist, instantly start getting more interesting with this uh, character that quests whilst caring about them. I think this is great. And as Rochelle joked about in the uh, in the live stream, it seems like every card that's rare and up uh, becomes a contender for enchanted, but I do actually think this would make a very cool enchanted card. So, so far, the only two I've actually put my hat on is Magicka Dispel, the Midas Touch, and uh, Kidda, the Floodborne Kidda we got to see the other day. Yeah, they're, they're my two shoe-ins for, for Enchanted. So there you go, a pile of reveals. What a good, fun day. Uh, we'll be doing all this again tomorrow, I think, because we have a pile of reveals coming on Saturday, which this will go out on Saturday morning. I don't know. It all kind of goes into a bit of a blur during reveal season. But I appreciate you stopping by and, uh, and joining me in looking at all of these cards. If you're not already, please don't forget to subscribe. We cover every single card reveal here on the channel as well as other stuff outside of reveal season. We also do a weekly live stream on a Monday night where we talk about all things Lorcana. I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for joining me. Until the next one, be good. Bye.